In this video, I'm going to talk about asking brilliant questions, but also then doing something equally brilliant with the answers. I've always had this phrase in business and work throughout the whole of my career. Always ask brilliant questions and do something equally brilliant with the answers. Plus also, we're going to talk about an extra brilliant bit at the end. So I'll come on to that. So I'm sure you're sat there going, go on then, David. Tell us how to do it. I will do. Plus the brilliant bit at the end. So cast your mind back to when you were children. For some of us, that's a while ago, but I accept that. But cast your mind back. Were you inquisitive? Did you ask lots of questions about the world and the universe and how it all worked? If so, great. But why don't we do so much of that now? Um, it's a trait that often we don't take from childhood to adulthood which I think is a bit of a shame. And I think it's really important that we do get back to being inquisitive, especially if we're looking to future-proof ourselves, because obviously in future-proofing, we need information and knowledge. Um, but if you've got younger children in your family, are they inquisitive? Do they ask lots of questions? Which is great. Encourage it, watch and learn from them. Now, I do appreciate that sometimes when we do have inquisitive children in the family, we call them other names, but please don't. Let's just obviously for the purpose of this video, just use the word inquisitive. It's a great trait to have. And also, one thing that the young children don't often realise is they're doing something equally brilliant with the answers. And that's the bit I'm going to come on to, which I think is really important uh, later on. So before we continue on to the brilliant bit at the end, I just want to talk to us about um, yeah, asking those brilliant questions. How do we get them onto our vocabulary? Well, very simply, we go and look at our six favourite friends. What, how, why, who, where and when. Put them on your vocabulary. It just makes life easier. If you're never sure what to say or do, ask a brilliant question using one of those words at the start and it then just flows and conversation flows. And that's the bit that I want us to get thinking about. So practice asking brilliant questions, but then think about it that when people have given you the information and answered the question, now's the time to do something equally brilliant with the answers. Guess what? we're going to ask them another brilliant question to get even more information and knowledge out of them. How good's that? Don't sit there whilst people are talking and think, what else can I ask them? Listen to them and ask at the end. Don't sit there whilst other people are talking and think what you want to say to add value to the conversation. Listen, understand, be present in the conversation People will love you for this. And this is a really important trait to learn and develop. So people will see that you're interested in them. They will then start telling you other bits of information, sometimes bits that they're not supposed to. <laughs> that's the bit I always like. And people will then say, look, please don't tell anyone this, but, and that's only come because I keep asking them really brilliant questions. I can then do something brilliant with the answers by asking them more brilliant questions. They give me even more free information and knowledge. Hey, but let's now apply this to the business world because it gives you an advantage. Think about it. You've sat there and had a conversation. Really, all you've done is ask them some great questions. They've given you answers. You've probed them even further. They've given you more brilliant information. And I've asked even more brilliant questions. I've got all this information. This puts me in an advantage. Just think about it. David now knows what David thinks and feels, which is great. David also now knows what they think and feel, which is great. But think about it when we're negotiating, sales, influencing and persuading. If we've got difficult conversations and conflict to deal with, or just management situations. I'm at advantage because I know what David thinks and I now know what the other person thinks. I can then use this information brilliantly 
to then influence, persuade, sell, negotiate, or get my points of view across. But I can't do it without asking brilliant questions and doing something equally brilliant with the answers. In other words, ask more brilliant questions, and then, brilliantly, I'm an advantage at the end. And I can use this information if I now want to present and come up with ideas, because it's gonna closely match and deal with the situation because I fully understand them. Think about it. Do you spend more time doing the talking or do you spend more time gathering, being inquisitive and asking great questions and doing something great and brilliant with the answers? If you need any help on this, drop me a line. I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you. So thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed this video and it's helped you to think about asking those brilliant questions and doing something equally brilliant with the answers to be equally inquisitive. Good luck.